Hey everyone, welcome to Wine Night. I am here with Jenna Knudsen. And uh, if you don't already know me, I'm Callie. And this is a uh, really fun tradition that we started last year of doing this for all of the members in our courses where we have wine night. And we get together with a special guest, um, drink some wine, talk about horses, talk about life, and um, you know, usually the experiences and the wisdom of whoever the guest is. So really excited to be here today with Jenna because it, she has a lot of, um, has lived a very full life and has a lot of expertise and wisdom around what our focus has been this last week, which is setting goals. So welcome, Jenna. So great to be here, Callie. Happy New Year. Thank you. And everyone that is popping on, it's good to see you. I see Galen is on. And just uh, pop a comment in as you're coming on. Diane's here. Diane is drinking bread and butter Cabernet Sauvignon. Nice. Yes. I hope C am I allowed to hit C all? Oh, I am. Okay, there you go. Yep. Gotcha. And Casey's here from Colorado. Awesome. So as you guys are popping on, just let us know where you're at and what you are drinking to join us this evening. And in the meantime, we'll pour our wine. So what what do you have, Jenna? Let me see. Oh, yep. And then here's my a Christmas gift. Can you see that? Nice. What go. does it say? I couldn't quite read it. Feminist. Nice. <laughs> I like your uh, your wine stop too. Oh, thank you. <laughs> of course. So mine is a um, a wine that's left over from Christmas, Italian Christmas red. Nice. And I actually bought it hoping that it was. I guess I didn't read it very well. I thought it was a spice wine because I love spice wines and it's not, it's just kind of a plain table red, but that's okay. I'm using it up on today's call. <laughs> there you go. Toast? Yes. Cheers. Ladies. All right. Lynn joined in as well. Lynn's having Chardonnay. Does it get any better than this? Really? We can all drink around the world. This is so great. Yeah, it is pretty amazing what, what technology allows us to do. I love it. Well, just to give a little bit more backstory on um, on why we're here and why I wanted to ask Jenna to be our guest tonight is it, Jenna and I met at a um, basically a business class, I think about two years ago. Mm -hmm. And anytime we're at those classes, as soon as you hear that someone else is a horse person, it's just like a magnet that you know you have to find them and talk to them later. So we met up there and it didn't really stay in touch, but you found me again um, just a few months ago at another one of similar type of a class. Yeah. After and, seeing your video and going, that's Callie, I met her. I was so excited. <laughs> yeah, so we, we connected there and um, Jenna is an equestrian life coach and she has the smart equestrian planner, which I when I when I saw it and especially saw it again this time when we met, I loved how it just combined all of the different pieces that I was already doing. So what what has been a time that planning has been really important for you? Have you always been a planner and a really organized person, or is this something that's developed? So gosh, how far back should I go? I'll start with uh, my mom said as a little girl, I was super organized. Like my things had to be a certain way. I had, I was a total neat neck. I'm sure there was a little OCD going on back then, but not as far as writing, not really. So then to fast forward many, many years, um, I had a great childhood. College was amazing. Got married, had 2.5 kids, had a Volvo, had a horse farm had like this beautiful life. And then I went through a divorce. I lost my horse farm in a bankruptcy. My car got repoed. I was like a bad country song. And my life fell apart, like serious epic failure. And I don't know if anyone has ever been in that place of like, just so much going wrong, I could not see out of the darkness. And what I started to do was to 
write things down out of survival. Like today I will shower and get the kids to school and cook dinner. Like I really went back to basics and something about the writing just made me feel connected to my life again. And I did that for years, Callie, like super basic in those uh, black and white composition books that we all need mm -hmm. in school. And when I look at back at them now, I'm like, that was so primitive, but it was really the roots of this planner because I would write my intention like, today I will feel happy. Here are three things I'm grateful for. We have ramen noodles to eat. We, you know, so I, in desperate times, planning gave me hope and that's really where this all started mm -hmm. so it wasn't this happy like i'm just gonna make my life amazing by planning it was out of epic failure so but here's like why i find so much value now and what i'm doing is because it saved me in a time when my life was really horrible and got me to the next level and then from that level it, you know, I, I was a little more sophisticated and it got me to the next level. So by the time I created this, I had been planning for 10 years. So, so much practical experience went into this planner. And now what this planner can do is it can take someone from survival mode to doing well. It can take someone from doing well to doing amazing. And it can take someone who's amazing and just blow their life out of the water. You know, so I've really sort of captured how to just move people level to level, no matter what their level is, because the systems are the same. You're just in a different spot. Everyone's coming at it from a different spot. But after you coach hundreds of people, you can sort of extract what the common denominators are. So that's what I love. That's that's why the planner works if you use it. So I want to get in more later in the call to what kind of those um, common denominators are, because that's something that has always fascinated me, is the differences, uh, especially, you know, when we get stuck or people that have had really big setbacks and, and frankly, hard lives, like what the difference is between people that are able to move past that and keep going and people that really get stuck in it. Um, but first of all, what is, what's been your background with horses? When did you start riding? I started riding probably in my DNA before I was born. So my dad was a rider, his dad was a rider, and his dad was a rider. That's as far back as we have family photos, but that's always so fun for me to see. So riding was completely in my DNA. And when I was about three, my dad wanted to introduce me to ponies. And my mom said, no way, I don't want her riding. I want her to do ballet. So off to ballet I went because we kind of do what our moms tell us to do. And then one summer when I was four, we were swimming at a pool and all of a sudden my mom couldn't find me, which is like typical of the seventies. And so she's crazy looking for me. And all of a sudden they see a horse farm is next to the pool and they go over there and there I am in my little bikini watching the riding lessons. And she said it was over from that point. So then I did made a novice and jumped cross rails and moved up and up and up. And at my highest level, I competed in metal McClay, which I loved. I really loved competition. Um, and then, and those were great years, but different from I, what, when I look back, I wasn't learning horsemanship. I was really learning how to be a competitor. So it's a little different than what I love now. And then um, I quit riding through college, then I had a family, and then uh, right when my daughter, I rode when Katie was pregnant, and when she was born, I bought her a pony, because I wanted to relive all of that, and then I've never looked back. So riding's really been consistent through my whole life, and now I'm a hunter pacer, I love cross country jumping, and I love to be in the forest, and I love horsemanship. So I've kind of done all the areas, and now I really want to be a horse person, not a competitor. Mm -hmm. So it's fun to change disciplines. Yeah, yeah. Has there ever been a time in your life where you weren't able to be active with horses or, act or riding? There was. So um, during college, I just 
I threw myself into college and I worked full time. So horses just didn't have a place in my life. So that was really, and I miss them. It's like, you think riding is not just something we do, it's who we are. Like I remember aching to be around horses and I went to University of Miami. So I was in um, South Beach and that's just not horse country. And I would drive all the way to different parts of Florida just to see horses, but life can just get too busy. And then when I had kids and you're going to be at home anyway with little children, I thought I'm doing it again. I'm, and I got five horses. I like went crazy and got right back into it. So really college was my only time of no horses and I missed it for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what is, what is something that, um, that you have found in the, the people that you work with as an equestrian life coach, what is something that you found is kind of a common denominator for the people that really um, do well in terms of whatever it is that they say they wanna do, they're able to stay on track and get it done? Okay, so <clears throat> I would say the common denominator is there's a few things i'll name a few things one is someone who has a clear vision of what it is they want whether you want to call that a goal or whether you want to call it a vision it's they really they say jenna i want to achieve this how do i get from a to b so one is clarity because if you don't know what you want it's challenging to get it if you're just sort of reacting to what life throws at you so the first thing i help people with is what's important to you What's your vision? And it doesn't have to be this big life vision. People don't have to save the world as their vision. It can be personal to them. But clarity is step one. The next thing that they have is a true inner commitment. We talk a lot about there is a huge difference between 99% and 100. When you're 100% for something, you're, you've already won. Like you are going to get there. And that's something that comes from within. It's someone who wants something so badly, they just, they need the tools and the strategies. And, and the third thing is the community. People who surround themselves with great people go on to do great things. That's why what you're doing here, I just love, it's so important. And I know people have, people have challenging spouses, they have challenging families who crush, try to crush their goals, try to crush their dreams. And I know that we can't get rid of everybody but there is a way to stay so focused on what you want and definitely bring in around you, even cyberly. I mean, our community, both of us, a lot of it is a cyber community, but we pump each other up. We believe in each other. We share what's working. And that, honestly, Callie, I think is the biggest tool for people's success is to be around people who are doing what you want to do, believe in, you know, believe in that and our good energy. So that's really what can get someone from A to B, no, ma no matter what the A to B is, you know, like that's the, it, it can be the tiniest thing and, or it could be this grand goal. They still need the same support. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that's huge. And I feel so lucky because I feel like, especially in, in recent years, I am just, surrounded by people that I love to be with. Like I have, I have great friends. I have everyone that I work with. I enjoy um, everyone at the barn. And it's kind of, it's kind of funny, but so I have other uh, acquaintances in my social network that also run barns, you know, and have training and boarding barns. And I find that when we're together, there's, they often kind of fall into a little bit of complaining or like, oh, I have, you know, this person that's a pest or this, you know, there's like a, a lot of barn drama. And I just love that there is, there is no one ever at the barn, student, boarder, person stopping in that I'm not happy when I pull in and I see that they're here. Okay. You know? But guess what? You created that. Like, that's the thing I want. I also want people to understand we create the energy around us and you are so focused 
on serving people, helping riders, that that's the only energy you allow in your world. And that's a skill that we can help people learn that when you become so focused on being a certain person out in the world, you, you only attract certain people and the people that aren't matching your energy do fall away after time. Like they just can't be around you because if you're not gossiping, well, that now they feel bad for gossiping or, you know, so honestly, Callie, you've created that amazing world that you have and that's a skill. Well, thank you. It's it's good that it is that it is a skill because I love when you can take things like that and make them a skill that can be taught so that other people can experience it because it's I just I, we do we have a great community and um, it, even the you know students in the courses when we have events it's just a it's just a fun time it's always good and here on wine night too. <laughs> Good energy on wine night. <laughs> First time for wine night. I'm like giddy. It's so much fun. <laughs> I think that's a common occurrence. <laughs> so good. So I do a book club cyberly. I have a live one and then I have a cyber one. And I never proposed drinking on it because I was like, I don't know. But now after this, I'm going to be like, ladies, guess what? <laughs> wine night on book club. <laughs> so what kind of books do you do you tend to read in the book club? Well, we let lots of people pick. So sometimes you're like, why did we let Susan pick? But in general, so like last month was this book called The Power by Naomi Watts, which is amazing. Everyone should read it. Um, it's basically, it's a little bit science fiction-y, but not really about how nature changes and gives women this superpower that we actually run the world and what happens when women run the world. So it's like the opposite of Handmaid's Tale, if you're ever anyone watches Handmaid's Tale. So that was interesting. And then our February book is Becoming Michelle Obama. So we do we do some serious and then someone will pick like a really flighty, you know, fun book. In the summer, summer reading, we always pick lighthearted because it's summer. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it's varied. It keeps you thinking. So no, oh, actually, that's my live book club locally. The cyber book club, we only do personal growth. Like this month was um, Jen's How to Be a Badass Moneymaker. So yeah. we're always, that Monday night one, we only do personal growth books. Yeah. So two different ones. Yeah, I, I love that. It was That's always been my favorite. Like even when um, in school, I love literature class. I love discussing books. So I should find a book club to get myself a part of because oh, it's, yeah. it's something that I miss. I read a ton and uh, yeah, I'd love to have people discuss it with. Adds a whole nother dimension. Yeah. Carrie just put a, a comment in that um, I think all, right, all writers should read Mark Rashid. He's definitely, as far as mm -hmm. equestrian authors, he is probably my favorite. I love oh, especially wow. his... Um, uh, horsemanship through life of of his different ones. I think I've read almost all of them. There's probably a, his earliest one that I haven't read yet, but that horsemanship through life was my was my favorite. Yeah, and Julia put a comment in too. This is different. Usually, usually Jenna, we do these wine nights in person, and uh, Julia is we're like co-hosts together. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> Where is she? Why isn't Julia here? She's co-hosting in the comments today. <laughs> Hi, Julia. <laughs> so what, um, what has been something that has been kind of a turning point in your life? And what, um, what was a lesson that came out of it for you? A turning point in my life. Okay. Yeah. So I guess one big turning point was going from... I kind of did things traditionally that I went to college, got married, got a job, had kids. Like I did things very sort of the way my parents wanted me to. Mm -hmm. And then when I got divorced, everything went a little crazy. And then I went through this really weird time of, and I guess an identity crisis, like who am I now? All my friends were married. It's hard to be the divorced person when everyone else is married. Now you're a single mom. So I went into a fear zone 
And I did the only thing that I thought I could do, which was get a job. So now I say it like job. So I went and got my insurance license and I sold horse insurance. Of course, I niche marketed to our industry. So I went farm to farm, but reporting to a cubicle from nine to five just didn't fit my personality. So I guess the biggest shift for me where I had to take a leap of faith was becoming an entrepreneur and doing my own thing. Because when you're married and you're part of a couple, you have a little bit of a support team and you can take some risks. But as a single mom, like, it, and I had zero child support my entire life, it always came down to me. So I've learned to live with a lot of like, I'm gonna jump and build my wings on the way down. I've always done that. And in my coaching, I don't push that on people because it's not for everybody. Some people really do need more of a safety net. But what it taught me is when you are 100% committed and you, I mean, the universe will move worlds for you if you have a good intention and you just go after something. So I became an entrepreneur, started my own business, scraped by, I mean, literally we ate ramen noodles twice a day. And my daughter, who's now an entrepreneur herself in college, she back then when she was eight would say, mom, we should write a cookbook, like 110 ways to eat ramen noodles. We could make a million dollars. And I just loved her spirit and like her, we can do this. So through all those hard times, one, my kids and I became a very close unit because we were always together and we were always like figuring things out together. So I learned that there's always solutions. I'm a very solution-based person. I never say, oh, I can't do that. I say, hmm, how could I find a way to do that? And that's a definite mindset shift for people. Um, and so I, that the big switch for me was going from fear and I have to do this to, you know what, this is my life and I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to change people's lives and I can do it. And I took that leap and the universe just kept giving me the people and the opportunity and I've never looked back. So that to me, like, that's walking the talk, doing the real deal. And that's what I share with people to, to give them, you know, this is not theory in the planner and, and in my coaching. This is that I was in the trenches. I did the work, you know, and that I think it makes a difference to people. It also makes me very empathetic to where people are and where they want to go. You know, I never take lightly that life can really knock people down and you just give them a base, a, a safe ground, and then they can soar. And that's that's an amazing feeling. Yeah. Now, since you've obviously been there, um, what is, like when you have so much going on in life and there seems to be so many restrictions there, how, how do you keep doing something that you love like riding? Like how do you keep that a part of your life? Was it something that, you put any focus into at that time or was it more of kind of something that supported you during that time so during the very hardest time when i first got divorced and i lost my horse farm i had to get rid of all of my horses mm -hmm. one horse i kept till the very bitter end and i mean it got so bad callie we all know that our horses are like our kids it was literally like giving away my children and that was devastating and when I only had my own personal horse left, I was making deals with everyone. Rhinebeck Equine had me on speed dial, the hay guy I owed a bazillion dollars, the farrier, but they all knew and loved me. And they knew I would make good on whatever they were credit they were doing for me. But I kept Hilo for the whole time. And whatever free time I had, I would go be with him. because It was like keeping him was keeping this part of my dream Mm -hmm. And I just wasn't willing to let go. Like, you're not taking this from me. And all my friends who weren't horse people would lecture me and say, Jenna, this is so irresponsible of you. You know, you have these two kids, you're eating ramen noodles. How do you have a horse? And they just didn't get it. Like, Hilo brought me through that time. And then we made it together. You know, like in the end, when my life was back on track, I looked at him and he was like the joy and the passion that kept me going. 
And if you're if people aren't horse people, they just think we're crazy. But other horse people get it, you know, like mm -hmm. your horse gives you energy and drive. And so that's, you know, why I'm a life coach for equestrians is that type of stuff, because we are different. We're different. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. When you like in the, the people that you work with through your work as a coach, when you have someone that is feeling really overwhelmed um, by, you know, whether it's something that is like a really traumatic life changing event or whether it's just the stress of like career is at a really demanding place and maybe they have a family and they're also wanting to pursue riding and they have goals that they want to um, improve at the riding or with their horse. What are some ways that that you've balanced it and that you give advice to people to balance all of that? That's a perfect question because who you described is basically everyone that I work with. So <laughs> the reason I love working with equestrians is we all basically are living the same life, just different variations of it. So I think the biggest challenge for people is getting their one getting their riding in because they run a business have a family run a for all these different things and riding tends to be last and then also getting rid of guilt there's so many people that every second they're at the barn or on their horse they're feeling guilty i'm not at my son's soccer game i'm not with my husband so the top things that i work on is one i call it sacred time if you want your riding to improve or you want to feel good about your riding you have to consider it sacred and the more you consider it sacred time the more your family everyone around you starts to realize like this is not negotiable mom rides three days a week at these times every week consistent so one of the reasons the planner works is you know when people say my goal is to ride three days a week, but they don't really know what days, they're just gonna get it in. It never happens because life throws you all these things. When you declare that Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday are your sacred riding times and you're gonna be at the barn from two to four and you write it in your planner, it's a done deal. So when you teach people to honor their time, all of a sudden they're like, Jenna, my family knows that I'm going, they arrange their schedules around it. Like we teach people how to treat us and teaching them that this is part of who we are. It's not a hobby. It's not something we do on the side. It's part of our personality. That's really important. So sacred time is one. And then basically just teaching people to prioritize. Like Americans are way too busy and way underproductive. We do all this stuff that really isn't benefiting who we are and what we wanna do in the world. So I help people get clear on what's important to you. Only do that during the day. You know, like social media, as much as I love it because of stuff like this, is sucking our time away. You know, people will scroll on Instagram. That is 30 minutes that you could have been exercising, moving, grooming your horse. So helping people get really realistic on how they're using their 24 hours is one of the best gifts I can give people. And then it's up to them. But that's when the planner also comes in and puts in black and white where you're spending your time. Um, I just want to give you one example. Email has stolen people's time. People are always checking their email constantly. And then something grabs their attention and they're in there for 20 minutes, gone, gone. So I have people actually schedule into their day when they're going to check their email. That frees their mind to not worry about it the other times. And it also lets them know, like, this is when I do things. So it's, it's giving people their life back, Callie. It's not, um, people have, we've given away our time. You know, we, we just, we get pulled here and pulled there and social media and so many, just so much noise. I like to make people's world quieter and and a little bit more sacred and add a little bit of magic. And you'd be amazed what what you can turn around in your life. Yeah, that I love what you just said. Making people's lives quieter and more sacred. 
Right. Isn't sacred such a beautiful word? I'm not religious as in religion. Um, mm -hmm. I'm very spiritual. But sacred to me just means honoring, like honoring. Not one of us on this call knows when our last day is going to be. None of us. And you and I talked about this before the call. The only thing we all know for sure is we're going to die. No one's getting out alive. But who on this call is truly living, like really living this life that they're so excited every day? That's what I want to help people get back to that living and considering each day a sacred day. If we started living like that, amazing things would happen. Yeah. Yeah, I agree completely. And I think I think that um, the horses really tune in and can really feel when someone is um, completely present and completely there with them and not lost in their mind of other worries or other responsibilities, but is just really excited to be there. And kind of that, um, it, you know, if you let yourself kind of think a little bit more like a child when you're like with your horse, like it's pretty incredible that we're able to keep horses, we're able to ride horses, we're able to spend time with them, we're able to jump them. I mean, it's just, it's like that, that kind of giddy feeling that for me, it still comes back every time that I like gallop across a field or I go through a jump grid that just like feels so good. Um, and when you can reconnect to that feeling more often, I think it, it ignites that passion for life. Absolutely. So yeah. my one of my best friends is Joyce and we're riding partners and we're starting a brand called 12 Forever because we don't know what this brand is going to be, but we feel like at 12 years old, we did not give a toss about anything. You would ride your pony bareback back then. No one cared. You know, helmet, no shoes. And that galloping feeling when you just were so alive and so like, this is what I'm doing, me and my pony against the world. And <laughs> to touch that, to, you know, be any age and feel that feeling. And I know what you mean about when I'm riding, I'm not thinking about my visa bill or the kids or my root canal or I'm, I'm with my horse. Mm -hmm. And for, I deal with a lot of women with two different things. One side is depression. One side is anxiety. And my remedy for both of those is being present and helping people stay present is truly a life changer, but no one helps you be present more than your horse. So the more time we can spend with our horses, really being with them and exactly what you said is true. They know and they respond. I think it like on some level, chemically and spiritually just gives us that moment of connectedness that we're all looking for. Everyone wants to feel connected. And that's all of us horse people. We're connected to our horses and that's, that's our bond, all of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, another question that I had, um, I had jotted down because I was just thinking of things for, you know, for tonight. And I sometimes find it's a challenge to, to strike the balance between when we want to plan and we want to plan for something and set goals and strive to achieve, but also have that bit of a little bit of what the energy we've been talking about and as far as like, I'm going to go with the flow and kind of take it as it comes and be adjustable. How do you find the balance between those two? That's an excellent question. And so many people write to me and say, but Jenna, if I'm a planner, then I'm not spontaneous. And then I'm, you know, like that's sucking the joy out of it, uh, out of life. And that's exactly the opposite. So here's what I want to say. Planning is tapping into your creative power that you have the, the power to create the day, the week, the month, the life that you love. The thing about planning is it gives you a sense of peace. People who plan sleep better. They feel calmer because there's a roadmap. Now with that, you're building self-confidence in yourself that you're the creator of your world. So say part of the um, planner every day is setting your intention. 
it seems like a simple act. Oh, I'm writing how I want to feel today. But it's not. What you're teaching someone is that they're in charge of their emotions. You know, you you don't want every single thing that comes at you every day to throw you. If someone's nice to you, oh, now you feel great. But if something bad happens, now you're down. I mean, that's why people get emotionally exhausted because you watch the news and you're fear-based and now your riding instructor said you're not doing this right and now you're disappointed. Like, we want to be in control of our emotions and that's what setting your intention does. So you teach people that, you help them realize that they're the creator, but in all of that, you're teaching people to live. So one of the main things that I share with people is you want to be committed to your goal or your vision, but flexible in how you get there. So like you're asking for something, but you're, you're okay with what shows up. So being spontaneous is awesome. You can absolutely be spontaneous. You can move a plan. Like, you know, women, it's all these new planners. So I have my group from last year and they're like my, you know, they're into it. They totally get it. But the newbies are like, can we write in pen? Is if I write something, do I have to do it? And I think, oh my gosh, you guys, this is your life. You can do anything you want. Like this is supposed to be fun. So I guess the whole point is to know that planning is not taking the joy or spontaneity out of anything. Like you can still switch it around, but you're just, you're learning Callie that you're the creator. You know, you're the one setting what you want to do. And then you can also change the plan. And that's, so you're, you're teaching someone how to be in the world. It's not, of course, writing it down is great. And there is scientific proof that writing is much different than doing it on our phones. So I know I'm going to get a bazillion questions about, do you have an app? I don't have an app at the moment. It is being created, but it's still not going to be the same as the book. It's really important to write. So when you write things down, you're harnessing the power and the confidence to say this is the life that i want and in that spontaneity and surprise and you know doing adventures it all happens so i'm glad you mentioned that because a lot of people say i want to have a life of adventure how can i do that if i plan everything i'm like no this is not you know it's not about being a control freak it's about harnessing that any Anything you want to do, be, or have is possible, mm -hmm. but especially if you set it out as your intention. So that's the exciting part. Yeah, I'm gonna just share this this comment that Katrina made because I think that she said it perfectly. Good planning is better time management and more time to be spontaneous. Katrina, that's what I meant to say. <laughs> you said it so much more succinct. That's perfect. <laughs> And it's true. And yeah. that um, also, when people plan, then they'd be amazed at how much time they actually have. But when you have no plan, time escapes you. But when you look hour by hour, you're like, I really do have time to ride my horse. I really do have time to go to the gym. So mm -hmm. it's it. there's all positives and n truly nothing negative about planning. Yeah. Yeah, and I couldn't agree more with you on writing. So a few years ago, I had tried to take my planning and my scheduling all online. And it just, it, mm -hmm. I found that it, it didn't work very well for me. And while I still use online schedulers, I, having like an actual physical copy is so important. Um, there's something that is really reinforcing to be able to like cross something off of a list or cross it off of the day when it's completed. And I also do a lot of journaling. Mm -hmm. I, I learned a, a style of journaling because what used to hold me back before is every time that I would write, I've always loved writing, but when I would write, I would always feel like I had to be writing something that was um, logical and that it made sense. And basically like, you know, like I was preparing it for someone to read. Mm -hmm. And when I learned to write much more just um, free writing. So, you know, as it pops into my head, just putting it down on the paper, I found that a lot more started to come up 
And one of the things that we talked about in the goal setting workshop was the idea of identifying your story and identifying your self-talk. And that was uh, doing that free writing is something that really helped me with that. And I use it even for now, even for little things, like for example, in, you know, I've been using the, the planner this year and with the section at the top of choosing to feel, there's been a few times where I'll write a word in and then I'll be like, nah, that's not the right word. And I'll scribble it out and I'll write another word. And I think if, for me, at least as a writer and someone that is likes things to like be very um, presented, giving myself the permission to just kind of change it and be a little bit more free in the writing has been huge. Absolutely. It's so true. So much of what we do, we do it as in someone else is looking at it. And if we focus more on what we are looking at, um, mm -hmm. I do a lot of teaching around self-talk because we say things to ourselves that we would never say to a best friend. I mean, the chatter that goes on in our heads. So that's a whole course on belief systems and all of that. And that's, you know, the planner is so much more than a planner. It's really about who you are, what are you a stand for, what are your values, what's important to you. I mean, these big questions make up how we show up in life and how you show up in life is how your life turns out and who you attract. So people think, oh, it's just a planner. It's so not. It's like the entryway into the best life that you love. Yes. So that's fun. Yeah. Just looking at the comments that came through, Carrie asked, how the how the wine is oh mine's coming along pretty good <laughs> mine is delicious i've cut down on my wine intake for the new year that was one of my things um i've been reading a lot about how much sugar is in wine which we all know but you know and so i really slowed it down and lost four pounds i was like geez why can't wine be like carrot juice or something so I'm really enjoying this. It's like a super treat. And on, on a Tuesday, I'm like a wild child. <laughs> yeah, we had this is a a, a double um, weeknight for wine for me because we have yoga classes here on Monday nights. And we usually have wine after yoga class. I, so <laughs> I need to live near you. <laughs> Not losing four pounds this week. <laughs> right. Um. So there was another comment in from, let's see if I can find it here. It just slipped away, but about vision boarding. And that is part of the planner, but it's also something that I wanted to talk about today because I know that you're doing a vision boarding um, class for your Smarties group, for the planner group coming up soon. And could you share some of your tips for vision boarding? It's something that for me has actually worked um almost eerily well mm -hmm. Isn't that so, <laughs> i would love to hear how you use it and especially using it thinking about you know for like riding and horsemanship goals sure so i started with vision boards like a big board years and years ago and i i think it really started when the kids and i were like living in a one room place cooking on a hot plate because I needed to give them something to strive for and to, you know, when, when times are challenging, it's best not to keep your head down and look at what is challenging. It's best to look at what you want. So I taught my kids how to do a vision board and we did a family vision board that we all looked at every single day as we went out the door. And it did not take one year. It did take us three years, but we achieved everything on that vision board. So I think from a very, like to teach our kids how to do vision boarding is amazing. But that vision board I think was pretty basic. Like we wanted a, a home of our own and you know it wasn't extravagant, but it worked. So from there, vision boards to me have always been about an image. I wanna look at something that evokes emotion. It, it makes me feel something like, oh my gosh, yes. And an example of that is I've had a dream of taking my whole family to Denmark for years to see, meet my relatives. They still live there. And so this year I'm putting it on my vision pages. I'm going to do a flag of Denmark and then put my family picture in the flag. 
So that really only means something. Someone else looking at it would be like, great, there's your family and there's a flag. But when I see it, it's this whole dream coming up. So I still do a vision board in my office because when I do client calls, I like to be inspired. But I thought, what if in our planner, which you look at every single day, what if you got inspired before you looked at your to-do list? So I put four different pages for vision pages in the book and mine are still a work in progress, but I do things like health, travel, things I want for our home, a whole Smarties, what I want for all the riders, my riding. And then for each month of the planner, I do little boards, one for January, one for February. So according to the month, like if it's spring, it's all about flowers and gardening. And so a vision to me, if you have this amazing vision and you want to build an orphanage in Africa and that's on your board, that's fantastic. And, and we can live into that. But for some people that gets intimidating. So what I love to do with new people with a vision board is to just bring it down a notch and just help them realize that this is your vision. It's personal. Say someone is jumping cross rails and they real like their vision, they see themselves out on a cross country course. Well, I want you to go into the Dover catalog or Smart Pack and cut out every cross country jumping picture or practical horseman that makes your heart sore and do a page on all these different people jumping. Because when you look at it, that's you and, and you feel it. So that's what I'm going to um, I'm going to do for in the classes is just take the beginners to the starting point and then people who know about vision pages just open up their minds that you don't want to put limits on it what people try to do is well jenna i don't know if this is practical to put on my vision board there's no practical you want it because you want it because you want it if it brings up a positive emotion it belongs on your vision board so vision pages are just a smaller portable version of our vision boards to take with us because how fun before you do the do to look at your planner and go right this is why i'm excited to be alive this is my vision then turn the page oh right i need to go to the gym to be fit to ride my horse so it's nice it's nice to why not live an inspired life you know yes yeah and that's that's kind of that old um saying of it's always better to be pulled somewhere than to be pushed Absolutely. so you know, looking at those vision pages and reminding of the why and the excitement. Right. I mean, I, so in the beginning, January is a fun month in our Smarties group because there's so many new people and lots of questions. Well, this one new girl from Canada, she got her planner and I, she must have spent the whole weekend doing it. It would, her vision pages were gorgeous. She set the whole thing to music and she's turning them and I'm watching the video going, this is amazing. And see, that's where community can really lift each other up because mm -hmm. you get inspiration from everyone. And when like-minded people are all creating, you just, you get, like you said, you get pulled. We're, we're all going to rise together. No one's left behind. So that's a good feeling, especially if you're in not such a good place and you're like, but I don't know. I don't know. Just relax and go with the tide. We're all mm -hmm. going to go together. Yeah. So Katie had asked in the comments, um, what is Smarties? Can you tell us a little bit about your group? Sure. So Smarties is just from the smart equestrian planner. And I, I write out in the planner uh, what our acronym is. And that is, I should know it by heart. Anyway, it's in, I'll re find it for you. But Smarties is the term for us. So Smart equestrians are equestrians who are empowered, who are inspired, who help each other. The whole motto of our group is equestrians empowering equestrians. I'm trying to do a movement of all disciplines helping each other. There's so much competition out there. We go to a show and you're competing in your group and then this group doesn't like this group. And I just, I don't partake in any of that. I think horse people are horse people and we all have so much knowledge and so much wisdom and experience. If we share it, whatever works for you, great, take it and use it. If it doesn't, awesome. 
but the Smarties community is just a platform of personal growth for equestrians because we all have challenges. We're all up at, you know, silly 030 and doing a bazillion things. So we support each other. We, people ask questions, they get advice. They talk about their planners, they talk about their day, but it's all very positive and very uplifting. So it's a community. And we just, we have new people from Norway, Denmark, Greece, Mexico, can I mean, all over the world. So how fun to like get a video of this British girl riding her horse in her castle and then someone in Mexico. And it's just, it's an amazing platform. And this is where social media, you know, so many of us, like there's a whole group, there's a lot in Maine and New Hampshire that have their own horse farms, but they're super isolated. It's like them on their horse alone all the time. But now with these communities, they have a whole family of horse people. So it's really nice to bring everyone together. Yeah. So that's yeah. the story. There's the long, the long answer. Yeah, that's it. It's great. I, I, I love that. It's one of my favorite things about our group too, is going in and seeing the pictures and the videos posted from, you know, people from all over the world. And I think it's going to be really fun this year as we kind of bring our groups together. Totally. So, I'm for those so of you who met you, Callie, like this was just such a good melding of tribes that are in sync. Yes. Yeah, I agree. I think it's really exciting. For those of you that are on and haven't and maybe missed the Sunday's webinar, um, I'm opening enrollment for the Balanced Writing course, which is the class that I do. And we have a really awesome community in, in that and in all of the courses at CRK Training. And we're teaming up. So everyone that's joining the Balanced Writing course is getting one of the planners as part of it and also gets to join in then on the Smarties group. So I think it's going to be really fun. And I'm looking forward to seeing how this group like how they're able to um, use parts of the course. And I'm hoping even, you know, better apply the course, having the support of the planner and having the support of being in Smarties as well. Absolutely. You yeah. really, the, what can be accomplished from a committed group of people is limitless. Like on our own, you can, we can each do a lot. Granted, I know there's people on here who are like super overachievers, but when you get together, then it's just so much more fun and there's new ideas and new energy. So I just, I'm so grateful for technology that we're all, we're like a cyber barn, you know, with, with no <laughs> negative stuff and all good stuff. Yeah, I love that, a cyber barn. <laughs> all support all the time, no manure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think it, cleaning stalls, manure can be very healing in the right in the right oh, quantities. No, I meant like the BS of gossiping and meanness. No, the manure yeah. the mucking stalls is definitely therapy. I think if <laughs> all of us didn't muck stalls, we would all have therapists instead. So yeah. that's a good thing. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, oh, I'm just trying to think. What was was there a particular horse that has been part of your life that you can think of um, just that, that kind of stood out, something that you learned from a particular horse? Sure. So when I moved to Stone Ridge, which is the hamlet right next to Woodstock, I'm in Woodstock, New York. I moved there from North Carolina because that didn't work out. I have a two-year-old and an infant. The two-year-old I wear in a backpack and the infants in a front pack. So I'm like just a moving, you don't see a mom, you just see kids. So I moved to Stone Ridge and the first place I find is the tack shop. It's like we have a radar for the tack shop. So I walk into the tack shop and I meet the owner and she's super lovely. And she says, where do you live? And I said, oh, I just bought a horse farm on Lapla Road. She said, Lapla Road, we're neighbors. Oh my God, I'm so happy I have another horse friend. Why don't you stop by my farm later? And I said, sure. And she said, do you have a horse? And I said, no, not yet. We're, you know, building the farm now. And she said, oh my gosh, I have a beautiful horse for sale at my farm. Why don't you stop by now on the way home? Okay. So I go back home and I stop at her farm first. And I put the kids back in the backpack and I'm walking towards her barn and up over the hill comes this gorgeous fiery red Arab 
mane flowing, rearing up at this beautiful blonde girl. And I was just like, oh, it was like Fabio, you know? And they come walking up and he's being so naughty. And she comes and introduces herself. Her name is Cindy Brody. She's famous in our world. She's total horse whisperer connection woman. And I said, hi, I'm Jenna. I just spoke to Gail. She said there was a horse here for sale that would be wonderful. And she was like, oh, that's Hilo, my horse. The rearing chestnut Arab, you know, the perfect horse for the young, the mom with two babies. So I talked to her. I actually like, you know, when you fall in love with a horse person, she was just so lovely, had so much knowledge. And the way she spoke about him, I must have been like postpartum insane because Liam was so little. I wrote a check on the spot and bought that horse. He was the horse that went the whole thing with me. So he, he's an Anglo Arab and a chestnut. So we know what that means. He was insane for so many years. We couldn't even go in a stall. He would fight and do all this crazy stuff. So to wrap this story up, I spent so much time with him. I loved him. Riding instructor said, Jenna, he's dangerous. You cannot, like you can't put your kids near him. Blah, they went on and on. I used to set up the pack and play in the middle of the ring put my kids in it with their toys and ride around him with like dirt clouds, how my kids, their immune system's awesome because of that. <laughs> but I put so much love into this horse. 10 years later, you can ride him bareback in a halter. The dog used to sleep underneath him. Like he just needed a family. He needed love and he had a big scar on his face. They said he was in an accident in Montana. So anyway, he was like my challenge horse that everyone told me to give up on. And in the end, we fox hunted. We did cross-country jumping. He was amazing. So he taught me sometimes you don't quit on, you know, the rough going ones. Yeah. Now he's happily retired. So he's a good you boy. Have, you have a Clydesdale now? Now I have Royal. I go from the little Arab <laughs> to Royal. And... Uh, He's he's my hard horse. Royal is just anyone who knows me on Facebook knows between my horse and my dog. My kids are like, why are there no pictures of us on Facebook? <laughs> because I'm always with the horse and the dog. But he's just amazing. And my goal with him is to cross country jump with total confidence. I'm a little bit. I had a riding accident and I really hurt myself. And ever since that accident, I have a little confidence problem. So I'm working on it and he's going to be the one we're going to do it. Yeah. That's, awesome. that's my goal. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being on today. This that's was so um, fun. And yeah. I'm, I'm looking at names. Thank you all of you who are on this call. It's really lovely to meet you. And uh, I love this type of deal. And Callie's just amazing. She's like a soul friend. So I'm happy to meet all of you. Yeah. And Jenna, where can, where can they find more about you? So you can go to thesmartequestrian.com. You can find Smart Equestrian on Facebook. My name is Jenna Knudsen, K-N-U-D-S-E-N. -E you can find me on Facebook. Um, the planner is also sold through Smart Pack. So if you're a Smart Pack person, you can add it to your order. Um, but basically, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, I'm on, I'm on LinkedIn. So I'm like Callie, we're everywhere. Just trying to, we're trying to gather our, our people. You just put out the love and the right people come back. So that's good. Yes, absolutely. And if you've been part of the goal setting workshop and you're looking for the next step forward as far as your um, horsemanship and your riding learning, the balanced riding course is open. And like I mentioned earlier, Jenna has graciously agreed to be a part of that, that the Smart Equestrian Planner is a bonus when you join the Balanced Riding course and also is excited to support you throughout the year as part of the Smarties group. So I think this is going to be a really fun year. I look forward to the folks that are joining the course and are going to be having both the, you know, if that education step is the right next step, as well as the support and the, um, planning pieces and learning pieces from you and the, and the Smarties group. Absolutely. And I'm so excited to take your courses and learn through you. It's, we really do complement each other and any videos that I make that I send through my group, I'm going to share with Callie. So anyone who's on here, 
if you're part of Callie's groups, I'm just going to send my stuff to her because we really just want to cross our groups in because we do two different things. We'd like you guys to get the benefits of everything. So see, we're like peanut butter and chocolate is a Reese's. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It is. It's very complimentary because I've always felt like as um, as teaching writing and even training, I've had so much interest in like what creates change? How can I help someone learn? Because learning is so much more than, you know, you can you can divulge information or show someone how to do something. But it's those other pieces that really are key to making the change and being able to apply the information or the knowledge. So and then, I love that you're here. Right. It's also the sustaining. Like a lot yeah. of us learn a bunch of things, but we don't know how to keep it going. And that's where community comes in. So yeah. it's a big piece. Yeah, so absolutely. Here, everyone. Kelly, thank you so much for having me on. This is just great fun. Yes, yep. great to have you on. Cheers to Julia, who's been in the comments and helping people out in the comments. Yes, and, to everyone. Yes, and we do these wine nights um, every night for members, so they're always a good time. <laughs> All right, good night, everybody. Thank you for being on. Thank Thanks you, so Jenna. Much, Thanks, Callie.